Let me switch to this one. Oh, I hope everybody has sound now. I hope anybody who's here. I got my setups all a little goofed up for me. Uh, here, let me see what I got in setups. Here's here's what we're painting tonight. Uh, my paints over here. Where are we? where am I? Oh, over here. Uh, they're on my right hand side. Artie is here. Hello, Artie. Uh, these are my M Graham paints that I'm using. Uh, here's the image that uh, I'm using. I'm really not going to use that a whole much. I just use that as a reference to kind of draw this out a little bit. Um, Michelle is here. Hello, Michelle. Uh, let's see. This is Fabriano paper. Let me. Uh, this is what this is. Everybody has seen it. 25% uh, cotton, which means 75% wood. Um, we're going to go with that. I'm using up the art supplies that I have left in the studio here, so we'll, we'll make the best of it. Uh, I've got a, a potpourri of brushes over here just off camera. Let me show you what I've got here. I've tried to, well, this is a pencil. Hang on a second. I've tried to switch over to all uh, cruelty-free brushes. So I've got my Da Vinci uh, Canseo brushes here. These are quite large. I've got four of those, sizes uh, 10, 8, 6, and 5. Here they are. Uh, I've got my one big mop brush that I like. Uh, this is a Raphael Soft Aqua brush. This is a fantastic brush. Um, I like it very much. Probably holds a little bit more water than this, but they're, they both hold quite a bit of water. Uh, this is just a rigger brush. I don't know what this is. Princeton Select brush. And then these are, if I have to do any finer detail, uh, these are Winsor Newton Cotman uh, brushes. They're synthetic. Also, they do a a decent enough job. Okay. Uh, enough of that. Let's get down to, let's just jump in and get down to doing some painting. Uh, you can see I've loosely, very loosely uh, based my drawing on the reference photo up there. And uh, I'm just going to jump in with this. I'm going to look at this first of all. I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a wash of I don't know, some red, reddish orange on here, but I want to make a note maybe which petals are green so I don't go over those. So I'll do one, two, I don't know, three, four. I'll do these two. No, I'll just do this one. I'll just do three as green, so I'll try not to paint over those. Terry, is Schmidt, uh, Terry Schmidt is here. Hello, Terry. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, for this first wash that I'm going to put on, it's going to be a very light wash. I'm not going to worry too much about uh, trying to define these petals. We're going to get into plenty of that as we uh, go through this. What I, what I just want to do is get some uh, nice color on these. Uh, this will hopefully, hopefully... Right? It's going to be a light wash. But hopefully this will make them all, I don't know, a little more cohesive uh, together when we uh, start to put on our other washes. Uh, just so, just in case, so that if we have any, um, what am I trying to say, uh, white, super white highlights that I don't want. Uh, this will just take care of that. We'll get them off of there. And I'm going to try to... Looks like there's maybe a little oil on the paper right up here. I'm going to try to get this done in one... Well, give me some of this yellow in here I've got. This is uh, Gamboge yellow. Let's give these some other colors. While, while it's still wet enough and it can be mixed around in here, I don't, I'm not worried about having one specific color uh, in here, because we're going to go over them with, like I said, a couple other layers. So we can, we can just have fun with the colors on this wash. Well, that's a terrible thing to say, isn't it? Uh, that makes it sound like we're not going to have fun with the other 
the other layers, which is distinctly not true. I hope we're having fun with all of these layers. Um, I'm just going to put these on. So I hope everybody's having a a warm, safe, uh, fun holiday season. Let's see, I said I was going to do this one red here. I think I've been spending my holiday season. <laughs> I've been spending my holiday season driving my daughter around to see uh, holiday lights. I think we've seen every holiday light in our town that we live in, every holiday light in <laughs> every town close by here. That's okay. It's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy spending, I, you know, I enjoy looking at the lights, but I enjoy spending time with her. So much fun. Just try to make it a, a good time and enjoyable. So I hope everybody else is having fun. Um, everybody who's here, if you have any questions, like always, like always, if you have a question, throw it out. Uh, I'm happy to answer if I can. If I can't, I'll, I'll let you know. I don't care really if it's a, an art question, a painting question specifically, uh, whatever. You can ask questions about me, how I got to where I'm at, how I'm, why I'm doing anything. You can ask whatever you want. I don't, I don't carry a lot of secrets around. Especially when it comes to painting, I don't carry any secrets around. I want everybody to be able to paint and paint well. Uh, I'm going a little slower than I originally thought I was going to go on this, but that's okay. And I'm struggling a little bit, I'll be honest with you, with this paper. It's drying a little quicker then maybe I had hoped it was going to. You can see I've got some tide lines in here and whatnot. Uh, I'm not gonna let it bother me too much. Yeah, maybe I'll let it bother me a little bit, but not, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna, I refuse to let it bother me. I'm not just not gonna do it. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna, this brush seems a bit big. Maybe it doesn't come to quite the point that I had wanted. Let me switch over to this big uh, Da Vinci Canseo brush. No, not Canseo. Casaneo. If I could, if I can read it at all. Uh, so this is my this is my first time back since June. Is that right? Um, I, uh, uh, Artie, Artie's asking, am I going to be doing any birds anytime soon? Um, I could probably do some birds. I'm not going to be doing any, any other than this, any more live painting this year. Uh, Artie, if you want to, if you want some birds done. I'm happy to do some birds. Uh, I love painting birds. Um, yeah, let me know what kind of birds you're thinking of. Uh, and, and if you really want to see it live to ask questions or if a video is, you know, just a regular video is fine. I'm, I'm willing, uh, to do some videos, uh, some, uh, some bird videos. I'll tell you a bird story here in a second if you want to hear it. it uh, I've never seen this before. This was un, uh, unbelievable when I saw it. I was walking down by the bay. 
um, yeah, yesterday and the day before. So it would have been Monday morning, early Monday morning, really, and yesterday morning. And I happened to happened to see a whole bunch of birds. Oh, oh, Don! Hello, Don! Welcome. I happened to see a whole bunch of birds in the water, and I kind of rushed over to where they were to check out, see what they were. Turned out they were cormorants uh, fishing. And I've seen cormorants uh, all over the place here. We have thousands of cormorants. If you don't know what a cormorant is, it's a, it's a diving bird. It's a kind of um it's kind of a duck ish kind of a bird and it'll sit on the water like a duck but it sits really low maybe like a loon um uh but they they just hang around and then they get in the trees and then they sit in the trees most of the day and dry their wings out and then they fish in the early morning and in the, in the evening and then by any time it's dark, they're pretty much done with their fishing. But um, but I, I so I happen to see uh, these birds, uh, a, a group of them, like like a hundred of them, <laughs> like it was a lot of them. And um, I you know I ran over towards the the, the fence, kind of by where I was walking. And they were just all diving and diving and diving and resurfacing and diving. And about every third one would come up with a little fish in its mouth. And then, and then two or three more would come over to it to try and take it away. And it would have to eat it or not or whatever. Anyways, I'd never seen it before where there's just so many birds all in one place. I'm just totally uh, fishing. Just I, all together. It was unbelievable. Like I said, I'd never... Uh, never seen it before. It was fascinating. Okay, I'm going to put in some, uh, I'm going to, while I'm babbling and stalling and, uh, <laughs> and doing whatever, I'm just going to take some of this yellow. This is a cold yellow, right? You can use, if you're doing this on your own, you can use any cold yellow. This, I happen to have Hansa yellow here, uh, M. Graham color, Hansa yellow. Uh, and I'm just going to paint these in, these little, I don't know what you call those right in the middle. Uh, but I'm going to start with the lightest color paint we have. That happens to be uh, yellow on here. And then I uh, would love to see how I paint a woodpecker, like a pileated woodpecker. I can do that. Uh, I'll put that in the rotation. Let me... Um, Just let me get something to write it down with so I can remember. Uh, if you want, if you wanted to see it live to ask questions about it, why I do whatever, um, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of wait until next year. It's kind of turned cold here. I'm trying to weatherproof my studio. I'm in a different location than I was uh, in the summer when I did it, and it's not, it's, it's cold. <laughs> let's just say, let's just say it like that. Okay, um, I think this is going to be dry enough. I'm going to start at the top up here, what I'm calling the top, and I'm going to, I guess I'm going to start with this petal. If it's not dry, if it's still too wet, we'll, we'll deal with it. I'm going to mix a little uh, a redder. I want a stronger red color here. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of this alizarin crimson. And if I want to darken it down a little bit, I'm going to take some of my maroon that's right next door here. Ah, let me show you. Ah, here you go. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. So the first layer, a little bit of pyrrol red in there, a little bit of gamboge, maybe some Hansa, just some warm, just to make it nice and warm. Now I'm going to come back and put on a little bit of this permanent alizarin crimson and a little bit of this maroon perylene to darken these, these up a little bit, and we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going I'm to say we're going to see how that goes. Hopefully it goes well. 
I actually did a uh, practice of this Monday morning. Monday morning? <laughs> yeah, Monday morning. Uh, so hopefully it goes pretty well, or fairly well anyways. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put on something like this. It's gonna look a little funny. Uh, and I'm going to do a little bit on this other side here, too. And I know it's going to look a little funny, and that, I'm okay with that. We're going to come back, hopefully, before we get too uh, dry. And we're going to just spread this around a little bit, just like this. And... So what I'm, what I'm hoping to do here is give this leaf a little bit of dimension to it, right? A little bit of dimension. We've, we've got a little darker spot. We've got a little bit of lighter spot in there, right? Maybe there's a little bit more light shining on this portion of the petal where it's light. Um, and, and, you know, my petals... Um, uh, okay, let me, <laughs> let me, I've got my fingers in here already. Okay, let me step back for a second and explain. I feel like I need to do this. Uh, my reference photo, you guys can see it over here. My reference photo, the, uh, in, in, if you look in here, the poinsettia flowers, right? And if you have one at home, I guess you can look at it. The petals are pretty flat. Right, if there's a if there's anything, there's maybe a V to them like this, right, with a crease down the middle. Uh, I I'm okay with that shape. Maybe it's not the most exciting shape in the world. Uh, maybe mine, right? Because I you know because my 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 uh, point setters are a little special. And mine have a little more lilted, a little more lift, a little more turn to them. Right, so this part right here where it's lighter, I'm imagining that bulges up a little bit more and then the leaf curls around this way. And then I put a little dark line in the center. Well, maybe that's a little shadow line or, or the, the vein that goes down the middle. But when I was doing it earlier, I was like, hey, you know what? I actually kind of like the look of that, how it comes out. So that's how I'm going to do mine. And that's the reasoning behind why I'm doing mine that way. Just <laughs> I'm not just... Slapping paint on. Well, I am just slapping paint on here. I don't want to fool anybody with that, but um, that's why I'm doing it this way. And and in these petals, I can make these um, any shape I want, any any curvature that I want. Uh, if I just draw the center line a little a little crooked right if I if I give it a little wiggle in there then what it's going to look like is that uh, that leaf has just a little wiggle to it just a little doesn't have to have a lot I don't necessarily need to make it look crazy but just, you know just enough to give it some interest somewhere and then uh, as I do a petal on top of another petal, the thing I need to, to think about as I'm doing it is, uh, am I going to be able to keep um, some lightness back on the top petal so I can put some darkness behind it to make it stand out a little bit more? And... Uh, you know, that's, that, that part doesn't have to be perfect. But, but if you can get a little bit of that in here, then so much the better. There's some little veining in it. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to duplicate. I don't want to do photorealistic stuff. Um, that's not, that's not my thing. I want to just take it and expand on this and make it look interesting. No questions. Everybody's everybody's silent tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna 
somebody doesn't start asking questions, I, I might just start singing. I'll sing some Christmas carols, and uh, and then you'll be forced to start asking questions to get me to be quiet. And I do turn my page a lot. Um, I don't. I don't subscribe to the the theory that you have to fit to the page. The page can only go one way. Whatever, no way. I mean, come on. If you have the ability, if you know, if your page is on an easel or something taped down, you can't move it. Well, okay, I get it. But man, let's make it easy on us uh, to paint, right? Watercolor is a tricky medium as it is. It wants to be fickle and move around and do all kinds of crazy things. So let's do everything we can. Uh, to make it easy on ourselves as possible. There we go. That looks like a nice uh, nice little leaf there. And I think this one can go like that. I'm going to get a couple of, of lines off of there. What did I say was my top? There we go. Well, that leaf looks kind of like it's folded up a little bit like that, don't you think? <laughs> oh, you already you're enjoying hearing my thought process. Good. <laughs> Let's hope it stays on track. I don't. <laughs> Let's hope I don't get too off track and start talking about who knows what. I I do I I I will say I do try um, to have fun, even with myself while I'm painting. Right? I I talk to myself all the time while I'm painting. Um, I, I really, f it's kind of, uh, to me, let's see, how does this one go? I think, um, I think I want this one. Let's just give that a little subtle bend right there like that. I find if I'm uh, um, whew, I can't even talk now. I find if I'm listening to, for a while, I tried to listen to an audiobook or a radio station while I was painting, and I found I was missing too much because I was paying attention to the paint and uh, and not so much to anything else that was going on. Uh, on the outside, right? And, and not so much to the radio or whatever. I saw so listening to it, but I was missing so much. And and so I said, "Well, what can I do? There's no there's not there's nobody in the studio with me. There's not ever likely going to be anybody in the studio with me." Um so I said, well, I'll just, I'll just, I can carry on a conversation with myself. And so I, and so I do, I try, well, I try to anyway. So sometimes I do better than others. I see, I see there's a, I, there is a question up there. There's something up there. I saw, just give me one second here. I, I just mixed a little extra. I think I actually put a little azo orange in here. That's okay. It's okay, um, as long as we don't make it too overpowering. I don't want to introduce too many colors in here. Let's see, I said that was going to go kind of like that. I don't know, something like that. So let's see, from here, it is kind of a shape to that, I guess. Let's see. Uh, I always tape uh, to a panel and turn it as I work. Perfect. Um, I, a lot of times, I, I don't like paint. I, I, honestly, I don't like taping to a panel like this. Uh, I just like my paper to free float. This is not anything, no big deal about it. But this paper, I feel like I have to because it warps and it bubbles enough uh, that I really feel like I need to, to do something with it. Did I paint Christmas cards this year? 
Um, I'm gonna. T I'll be honest with you. I didn't. I, I didn't. I'm. Uh, uh, I'm struggling this year. This is a uh, you know 2020 has been a tough year for everybody. Uh, 2020 has been a tough year for me, and uh, you know obviously I haven't been doing my live stream. I've been trying to get out and do things and trying to stay motivated. It's been it's been a difficult trying year for me this year and I, I'm not really going to get into all the reasons why that is but let's just let's just accept that it, it, it has been and uh, I just I couldn't I couldn't get the motivation to paint a whole lot of uh, Christmas cards this year so uh, if you are on my Christmas card list and you're not getting one from me, it's not because I don't like you anymore. It's not because uh, of anything else. It's just uh, this is 2020 has been tough. Um, so to answer your question, I, I I have not. I have not, and and I quite honestly I do feel a bit bad about it. Um, because everybody, everybody enjoys them. Everybody enjoys getting, I don't know how you guys like uh, viewing them <laughs> as, as you see me painting them uh, on YouTube. Uh, but I, but I think everybody enjoys getting them or they can at least appreciate the fact that uh, I painted them by hand when they, when they get them. Um, but it's a bit weird because I don't even see anybody at my work that I would normally give a card to. Um, my work is pretty much a, 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 a ghost yard. Uh, so this is starting to take shape. This is really starting to look nice. A couple of these petals in here are, are you know, they have some life and some movement to them. I like the way the way they're going. I'm just gonna just continue to move around. I'm gonna do this one back here. Just I'm gonna leave, you know, as I move around. I'm trying to do it in a circle. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm trying to do it in a circle so that uh, by the time I get back to the next one around, everything around it is dry. That's why I'm doing it this way. Uh, this one is gonna be a little different here. I can already tell because. Um, I've got to go behind this and behind this, and I've got to make that darker back there. So um, I'm going to go with some maroon in here, and and if that's not quite dark enough, uh, let's see. This one here should be. Uh, neutral tint. Neutral tint is exactly what it sounds like. A neutral color. It actually comes off um, a little bit more on the the purple side of neutral. And then, and then a little bit more of our maroon and a little bit less of our, uh, what's that, permanent alizarin crimson as we go in here. Just go right up against that petal. Now if I leave just a little, a little tiny gap there, it's not going to matter or it shouldn't matter a whole lot because uh, there won't be any white sticking right through uh, because we have put on our first layer of color and uh, that is going to help us not have a quite a such a white highlight on that which for me is always kind of a sticking point. I don't I don't like the white white highlights. 
Yes, I know we do have white white in nature. Um, but I just think you can have a very light highlight uh, and have a little bit of color to it. I think, I think, or I don't know, who am I? I'm just some guy. Uh, but I think it just adds a little bit more to it to have that little bit of color underneath uh, is all. So that's why I do that. How's that? Oh, that one look. Oh, that looks interesting back there. That's interesting. Let's put a few veins in here. I don't know how this one goes. Like that. There's no, there's no right and there's no wrong to it. Let's see. The uh, Terry says the first time, uh, the first time I painted my own cards, I did my snowman. Oh, and I've been trying to do some every year, uh, but I had a real tough time this year. Yeah, yeah. It's it's this was a tough year for everybody. Um, stick with it, uh, Terry. Stick with it. Things are going to get better. They're going to get better for all of us. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I feel you. It's it was a tough year. Uh, Artie says, "What are my favorite paints?" I am painting with my favorite paints right here, Artie. Um, I have had, and I and I have a lot of paint. A lot of paint. I have a lot of paint. Um, I keep trying new paints. Because, yeah, you, well, first of all, you know, I, I paint. I, I paint a lot. I like to paint. It's fun. It's an enjoyable thing for me to do. And um, if, I can, if I can find a, a paint that would make it maybe a little bit more enjoyable for me, I want to use that. So I've purchased a lot of paints over the years. I've been given a few paints. Um, I use a lot of paint. <laughs> And um, the one I like the best is the one I've got right here uh, on my palette. These are my M. Graham paints. And, you know, lucky enough, these were some of the first ones that I ever used. They were not, by any stretch, the first ones. Um, but they were some of the first ones that I've ever used, and I, I got them, and I never looked back. Um, but let's talk about paint. Uh, Artie, great question. Let's talk about paint and why I like these and maybe don't like some other ones quite so much. And I don't want to slam anybody. There are goods and bads of all the different paints out there. So I, I, let's talk about it, but I don't want to necessarily say, oh, I don't use this paint because it's horrible or it's whatever. Um, because even the, even these M. Graham paints I, that I love so much, uh, there are a few issues I have with them, and you know, for good or for bad, it's how it it's how it goes. Okay, let's see. So I gotta skip this one. Uh, I can come to this one or this one. Let me do this big one <coughs> in the back back here. Uh, so these M. Graham paints. So let's, let me talk M. Graham paints first of all. These are professional grade paints. Now, all that means is that um, there's per volume of paint. There are, uh, there are, there is, I should say, let me try to speak proper English. There is more pigment than there is in student grade paint. Well, how much pigment is there in student grade paint? Well, I don't know. Nobody really knows. I mean, somebody knows, but nobody really knows. Uh, because not all manufacturers do everything exactly the same. So one manufacturer's 
student grade paints will have more pigment in them than another and um, there are some people who paint with a high-end student grade paint and it looks uh, just as nice as another manufacturer's professional grade paint uh, but in general in general student grade paints have more fillers less pigment um, per volume than do professional paints okay now having said that these M gram paints are packed 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 jam-packed with pigment there's so much pigment in here that honest to God sometimes it becomes an issue it's hard sometimes um, to get a small pool of dilute paint and that sounds a little funny but from time to time it's it's tricky uh, you, especially after you've used them for a little bit, you, you just touch them and you get so much paint on your brush. Uh, Terry says, M. Graham and Daniel Smith are nice. Daniel Smith are nice. I don't use a whole lot of Daniel Smith. Uh, Daniel Smith, my problem with Daniel Smith paints, and Daniel Smith are professional grade paint, very good paint. I'm not, I won't say anything bad about them. Some of their paints are wonderful. Just absolutely fantastic. But some of their paints, in my opinion, um, are a bit dull. They're just lacking something. Right? I know um, watercolor paints aren't supposed to be shiny or necessarily vibrant or whatnot. But somehow, in my opinion, and I'm... It's only my opinion, and that's all. The um, the Daniel Smith paints just don't, uh, in in some ways, they just don't uh, live up to what I had hoped for them. Liza, hello, hello, welcome. We're just talking about different uh, paint manufacturers and the paints that they make. Um, having said that about um, Daniel Smith, I have quite a few Daniel Smith paints. <laughs> I, have, I have a lot. I probably have. Ah, oh, phew. I probably have 20 tubes of their paint, maybe more. I don't know. I have quite a. I have quite a lot. And if I had to give it up, I'd be upset. <laughs> so, so, um, but some of their colors are, are unbelievably fantastic. And their duochrome uh, uh, line is really interesting. They do a lot with uh, earth, or, or earth metals, and that's not right. Weird, weird materials in theirs. And and it and it some of it's a big hit, some of it's a slight miss. Again, my own opinion. Uh, but they're trying to be different, and uh, they do they do a great job. But overall, for the colors I use, um, I I just think M Graham. Uh, suits me a little bit better. That's all. Um, like I said, nothing at all against Daniel Smith. Um, who's uh, who's the um, uh, oh, who's the British? Uh, Windsor Newton. There you go. That's I'm sure I have the brushes right here. Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton paint. Um, same issue. Same issue for me. Some of their colors are a little wonky. That's okay. That alone doesn't doesn't bother me as much as 
It does, it really bothers me that their paints are so hard. <laughs> There's, you gotta use a jackhammer sometimes to, to, to wet them, uh, to, to do anything with them. Oh my God, they're so hard. Uh, Eliza, you said you re you got on that crazy Dino Smith train, and you like most of them. Okay, like I said, they're 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 a fantastic uh, a paint manufacturer. I like that they're uh, located in the United States because, well, that's where I'm at. What happened? Wait, wait, wait what happened up up here? Where did my reference photo go? Hold on one second here. What happened? Did I bump this? Did I move it somehow? I don't know what happened. Okay, I'm moving me. So you can see the reference photo. I have no idea what happened there. Um, uh, let's see. I got the RD Ross. I agree. Uh, you, oh. Oh, Artie, I missed Artie. I like seeing the luminosity in these. Oh, they're they're starting to stand out. They're, they're starting to look like something, right? All right, I'm, I'm afraid I'm getting a little dark here. Uh, as I'm looking at the screen, I can see it, uh, that there's a big difference there and here. But I've got to watch that a little bit. Um... Let's see, both are made in America, and I use both. Here. How about cost in California? Cost for Daniel Smith stuff in California is you'll get a tube, a 15 milliliter tube, which is about this size, the normal size. Um, uh, they're going to range from 10 bucks, 9 bucks to 30 bucks. For some of the more exotic um, colors, I think for Daniel Smith, it's about the same for M. Graham paints. Um, and like I said, they're great. They're 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 both both uh, manufacturers are great. I believe they both use um, honey as a binder agent in their paints. I know M. Graham uses a, a specific honey in theirs, and that's why on the palette, your paints, if you use M. Graham's, are still shiny. Uh, they always look like they're wet, and they re-wet very quickly is because uh, they use that honey. And I believe, I believe M. Graham uh, paints, are, I'm sorry, I believe uh, Daniel Smith paints are are exactly that same way. Uh, okay, so I'm I'm painting kind of around this one a little bit, uh, so that we can see that f that pedal in front just a little bit more. And I'm hoping I can just scrape off a little. I got a little too aggressive with my water here. There we go. Let's scrape back a little bit of that so that we can uh, then see some light in there. There we go. So we can see a little bit of, of that pedal in front. Um, I'm told I told my kids if anything happened to be to not give my Daniel Smith to pay. <laughs> yeah, right. Sell it on eBay. They'll make a ton of money. <laughs> That's right. Um, I love tubes. Much more economical. I may have missed it. Tell me about how you shade to make the petals pop. <clears throat> okay, so the only thing I'm doing to, to shade these to make these petals pop is I'm trying and I'm looking at it and it's 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 more for uh, so if as I look at <laughs> my monitor which is up there and I look at this mine pop more here in real life, but all I'm trying to do 
is put a a dark next to a light. Put a dark next to a light. A, a, well, let's see. A dark next to a light. We can't always do it. In the middle, it's going to be a little bit muddier. How, you know, how do we do that? But over here, a dark next to a light, right? That's all I'm trying to do here. The, the petals on this are, are reaching out so far. They're really nice for us. Uh, in that they they extend out so only part of the petals overlap so it, it makes it a little bit easier for us that we can put a nice dark color down uh, in just a little bit of that and then let it blend like like look at this one it's dark it, it's dark way down here this petal and then way out at the end here it's really light so if I put some dark on this one it's going to push that back this one that's unpainted, and this one hopefully stands out quite a bit. That's the theory. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the theory behind how that works. Uh, is it going to work that way? Yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna say yeah, it's gonna work that way. Sure. Here we go. Uh, these green. Petals are, are nothing more than the red ones, just without that beautiful red coloring. So let's just do that. How's that? That makes that, that, makes that red pop right off. Well, of course, uh, green next to red really does make it pop off a little bit more. And I hope when that dries up a little bit, we can see some of this nice yellowish color from behind. Uh, come through. There's a bit of yellow on these petals. And this one I'm going to mix in this dark. Uh, this dark is, is it's basically olive green here. Right? And then I'm going to put a little bit of the, the green. The greens I have on here, I have a cobalt green then I have next to that, uh, my second green over is thalo green. Then I have uh, olive green and azo green. And, and I have these on here specifically. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's method to my madness on these ones. The, the colors in the, the trees and the landscape around where I live have this kind of... Um, deserty feel to them. We live in, I live in a very Mediterranean climate, I guess. I, although I wouldn't be saying that today. Uh, and, and our greens never really green up. They're a weird kind of a, a green. So I don't put like a obviously a sap green or a leaf green or an emerald green or something like that. Not going to work for any paintings that I want to do for the plants around here. So for me, everything is this olive green. It turns into this olive green uh, midsummer. It's just, it's, it's really, um, like it goes into its summertime hibernation, all the plants here. Trying to hold in any water that they can and not let it out, right? And then uh, in the wintertime, they will green up a little bit, but they don't get like a bright green. Like I said, it's um, it stays more of this uh, cobalt green. And then the thalo green that I have on it. I just like thalo green. Thalo, <laughs> thalo green is, thalo green by itself is completely frightening to use. Um, I mean, let's just, <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. It's, it's a nightmare, right? It's so strong, so overpowering. When you put it in anything and you look at it, you're like, oh my God, really? Why would anybody use that harsh of a color? But 
Uh, but don't 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 listen to uh, uh, Thalo Green haters, right? Thalo Green is a great a great color when you mix it. It's a it's a wonderful color to mix with, and you don't need much Thalo Green to mix with anything else. You only need a little bit. Uh, and it, it will alter the colors of everything else and, and give you some really wonderful results. Uh, but you have to be not afraid to use it, <laughs> certainly. And you've got to be willing to take a chance. And when you're painting, uh, you're painting... Uh, taking a chance, e lots of times, isn't really what you want to hear that you should be doing. Uh, what you want to do is paint something that's going to make your uh, your uh, painting look fantastic. <coughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, hang on, I got a little tea here. Oh, that's nice. Um, but Thalo Green is not the enemy. It's using Thalo Green straight that's the enemy. <laughs> it's just, oh, it does. It gets. It really does. It gets overpowering very quickly, very quickly. Okay, so now we're in a little tricky area right here. Right, we've got a dark back there. We've got a, a middle tone here. We've got a very light here. How do we handle it? Well, very delicately, where we can make a dark, let's make a dark. And where we can't, we won't. Simple as that. All right, a little water on my brush. Needs to be a light on the outside here, so let's let it be a light out there. Let's just push some of this paint around. There we go, and it needs to be a little bit darker on the inside now that we've got a little uh, water flowing on here. Let's add just a little bit of dark. Come on, come on Maroon. We'll just add a little bit, just around that petal. This is and I, <laughs> and this is one time that I don't know exactly what's going to happen uh, because this is uh, this is this weird uh, Fabriano paper that I don't normally use. Oh, I just went right over that one. Let's take a little bit of that off. And it's cotton paper. So I, I'm, I, <laughs> I don't know exactly how it's going to run, how it's going to fit in here. I just don't know. We'll figure it out. Oh, how's that look? I took too, I got, it's too homogenous. I don't like it being quite like that. Let's see, um, we need a little, come on, come on. There we go, there's that one. Let's see, somebody said something. Uh, Artie, I live in Arizona. I'm not sure what greens to use on my palette for painting cactus. <coughs> Where'd my color card go? Did I throw... Oh, here it is. Look at cobalt green. Look at that. Cobalt green's a fantastic cactus color. Right? Uh, a little uh, cobalt green, if you mixed in a little bit of this olive green in it, you could darken it down for a little shadow area on a cactus. It'd be unbelievable. That's how I use it. 
Like you don't have too much. Uh, your your plants aren't too different in Arizona than mine are here. And um, that's one of the reasons why I have that cobalt green on here is because those desert plants. Um, they, 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 they need that color. Liza says, Michael, I thought you were hooked on arches. I am. I love my arches paper, but it's the end of the year and I'm trying to not buy any new art supplies until next year. You know, maybe Santa's going to bring me something. I don't know. So I'm using whatever paper I have left over in the studio. And today that means uh, this Fabriano, Fabriano paper. I, do, I, I, I like Arches uh, paper. Some people don't like it. They think it's too hard. I get it. Uh, but I don't. I don't think it looks. It looks too. It, I don't think it feels too hard on your brush. Um, but I know some people that do. But no, I love uh, my arches paper. I just don't happen to have some going right now because, like I said. I I, <laughs> I didn't do a lot of painting over the summer, and as a result, I didn't buy a whole lot of, um, of paper. I didn't do, you know, my summer or my, I guess I shouldn't say summer. I mean, we're at the end of the year, right? The second half of my 2020, let's just say it that way, the second half of the year was so weird, I, I realize I'm not unique in that. I'm not, I'm not saying that I, I mine's any, my plight is any different than anybody else's or, or anything. I'm just, you know, I'm saying my time was so weird and so hard to, uh, to get to do things um, that I just didn't, I didn't buy any paper because I wasn't painting a whole lot. And, um, and so now at the end of the year, I've actually gotten back into painting. I've done a, I've done a number of paintings, six, seven, eight paintings over the past, uh, week to 10 days. And I'm finding I'm a little lacking here. How does Fabriano compare to Arches? In my opinion, it's terrible. <laughs> I just, so... It's comparing apples to oranges. Uh, the paper I'm using, I, and I, I said this at the beginning, is 25% cotton. Oh, here you can see what it is: Fabriano Studio watercolor paper, and it's hot press. And I don't, and I don't I hate hot press. I don't have, I don't have any idea where I got this from. Um, so it's not a fair comparison because this is this is 75% wood pulp paper. And Arches paper is 100% cotton rag paper, which is always going to be better, in my opinion. You can use the you can use the other paper for other things, and it'll work. And I don't I don't want to um, say that only. Um, only uh, all cotton papers good because there are some all cotton paper that is uh, that is not good. But I think I just have a suspicion that if you paint for any amount of time, uh, you're going to end on liking uh, uh, cotton as a surface to paint on. I, I just have that sneaking suspicion. It's just, it's, it's nicer. It holds water better. It, uh, it, it's, it 
it limits the flow. It doesn't uh, allow the paint to travel across the paper quite so much. It stays wet for a longer amount of time. You can work with it a little bit longer. Um, this, it soaks in so much quicker, regardless of any sizing that's on there. That was succinct. <laughs> it was succinct, but it's, it's, not a fair it's not a fair comparison. It just isn't. Um, if, if this Fabriano paper were all cotton, and Fabriano makes some fantastic paper. It just doesn't happen to be the paper that I have. Right, so, <laughs> so I don't want to, I don't want to say you know Fabriano paper. It's all terrible because it's not all terrible. I just happen to have a lower quality of Fabriano paper, so that's why I'm saying the paper that I'm using is horrible. I have used some um, Fabriano Aquarello. Is that, I don't even know if that's how you say it. And it's very comparable to Arches paper. It's very, uh, it's very nice paper. It is very expensive. You love watching me live. <laughs> you learn to, oh, good, good. Um, Okay, so if you're learning a little bit, let me throw this out there. I was thinking about, you know, talking to my wife and kids. I always try to get their opinion on a few things. Um, I was, uh, I was, you know, we're always throwing around new ideas to do things. And I was like, I should have a, a paint-along session. Uh, how do I describe it? Well, uh, God, I had it, had it, um, whew, it's, um, so this is, uh, so, <laughs> so this is what I was thinking was come up with some dollar figure. I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I don't know what that number would be. I don't have, I don't have that number in my head right now, whatever. And uh, then I contact you and we talk about what painting you want to paint. And we'll settle on a, a on a, whatever image you want. And then we'll sit down somehow Google Hangout, Skype, Microsoft Teams, what's the other one? Zoom, something like that. And we paint one-on-one uh, -on -one for an hour, hour and a half, something like that. And I tell you how and why I would paint your painting, your image, the way I paint it. And just go through it and you have any personal instruction that you want or um no that's what that's what i meant to say right and then when it's done you have you have a painting and you have uh the knowledge of how and why i did something with it and you get to take that with you Gee, if you ask nice i'd probably send you my painting <laughs> but i don't have any idea if anybody would want to do that I don't, is that anything anybody would be interested in? I don't, I'm not, I, it's not getting off the ground anytime soon. I can just tell you that. Um, next year, God, I can't even imagine. I got so much that's going to come up next year. Probably springtime if I were to do anything like that. Even. All right, so I, now I'm just giving a little bit of green to the, what I'm deeming the bottom of these. It doesn't have to be perfect. They're not set in there perfect. Give me a little bit of this neutral tint along with my green. I'm going to go a little bit in between these. 
Um, this is one thing I don't like about these brushes. Where, where is it at? These brushes. Ca uh, Casaneo, the Da Vinci Casaneo brushes. They don't always come back to a nice point. And that's... That bothers me a little bit. Everybody's silent. <laughs> the personalized instruction, maybe not. That's okay. That's fine. Just an idea. Darken up some of this area around here. I know I paint in watercolor and everybody everybody wants you to leave all of the light in there, right? And you leave all the light, all the whiteness. All the what I can't do it. I can't. I can't. It's dark in there. Right in the center of that plant. It's all dark in there. I need some I need some darkness in there. That should help to set off some of this other stuff too, if it's a little bit darker in there. Uh, and while I'm waiting for this, we can finish up a little something around the outside. Where's my big brush? I was thinking maybe a nice soft yellow uh, to finish this off with might be really nice. Got a little, got some red over here that I don't want on my palette. Let's just scrape that off. We can get into some of this nice yellow. And now we get to see, oh, I picked up the wrong, this is an eight. We can see how much water this brush really holds. It's got a big belly on it. I mean, it's huge. It should hold a ton of water. And I just want this to be, uh, I think I did this on my last poinsettia I painted. I don't, I'm not worried about uh, having, you know, drop shadow on here for this. We could put a little bit of a drop shadow. I mean, it's yellow, right? I just don't, I just want to cover up the white on here. Make it something soft and nice, right? Cover up this this white that is so stark and a nice we have these this warm red on here anyways so a nice warm yellow is just gonna um, make it feel nice and nice and warm and homey uh, let's see sometimes white distracts sometimes white does distract White isn't. White isn't the be all end all that everybody wants you to think it is. Oh, but look, it's it's warming right up. It's nice and light. It's it shouldn't be distracting from our flower at all. But just give you a nice warm glow around it. Actually, I don't think this brush holds quite as much water as I thought it did. A little surprising. I. That's okay. That's okay. Now here, here's where I really have to have this uh, pinned down or taped down because uh, I do know that this paper, if, if I get it wet, it will totally buckle and um, just warp all up. Just 
something fierce. And look at that. How nice does that look? It's got this nice, warm, inviting glow on it. It looks wonderful. Uh, and this is the time where we should... Yeah, right. The, the yellow makes it pop and looks so nice, right? Uh, and this is the time where we really need to stop and look and say, okay, uh, what do we need to, to change? What do we need to enhance to make it to make everything right, right? Does this need to be darker? Does that need to be darker? Does, where can I do a little bit more to make these petals come off the page just a little bit more? Which yellow is that? Uh, I used a warm yellow here. This is Gamboge. Uh, this is a Gamboge yellow right here. Um, and the, the, <laughs> let's see how I have my colors set up. Uh, warmer, my yellows, right? Warm, middle, and then cold, right? It's just really warm. Orange is yellow, right? It's just a weird yellow, but warm yellow, cold yellow, that's a warm yellow also. Warm reds, cold red, right? Uh, warmer blue, colder blue. Well, the green, I don't have much. Warm and cold green, uh, and then those are neutrals. But so, so for me, I don't even have to uh, think about really if I want a green and I want a warm green, I just go to this side. If I want a cold yellow, I go to that side of my yellows, uh, and I don't have to think about it. Just how I, I don't know, I, just how I started doing things. Um, I'm looking at this, and the only thing I really want to do, and I don't think I want to do, I'm looking, it's funny because I'm looking up here. And it's a little different than looking here. Uh, I don't think I want to do anything with my red. I actually want to darken my green a little bit. I think, especially on this one, I think if I darkened my green a little bit here, especially right around this petal, That might help it pop off the page a little bit more. And I think I might have just lost a little bit of that uh, because it's wood pulp paper and it probably just ran and continued to run a little bit more than I wanted to. But this should help with Popping the red petals, leaves right off the page. Should help with that. Get it wet a little bit. Blend that color right on out to almost nothing. Well, it helped a little bit. As I'm looking at it, it helped a little bit. It didn't didn't drastically uh, change it, but but I like it. Okay, I'm gonna call it there. I I could fiddle with it. I could do more. I could I could um, make these lines a little bit tighter. The veins on on the the leaves a little bit tighter if I wanted to. I don't think I'm going to. I I kind of like the loose ish style here. Uh, I'm going to sign that and call that good. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoyed painting it. It's super fun to get back, even if just for a night. Uh, thank you all for joining me. How many people do I have here right now? 15 people here. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to take a picture when this dries up. I'll take a picture. I'll post it to. Instagram, and uh, you'll be able to see it in, a, in much better detail. You'll see how it looks in real color or much realer color. Um, I've got links down below. 
uh, to Instagram, Twitter. What else, what else do I have down below? I've got links to my webpage down there. Uh, I've got links. You can buy me a coffee if you'd like. Uh, it's just a way for, in $3 increments, you can help support the, the studio. Um, I'm trying to think whatever what links I have down at the bottom. I think that's about it. Thank you all so much. I hope you are staying safe out there. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. Uh, and I'm going to go and research how to paint a woodpecker. <laughs> That'll be fun. And we will see you all back here next year. Thank you all so much. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>